us to, uh, as we look at the Word of God, the Word of God tells us that um, that His Word is profitable for instruction. And uh, I, I feel like that's what I want to do tonight. I want to look at instruction. The, the, the Word of God talks about thanksgiving, talks about sacrifices, talks about praise. And so I have us kind of in the mindset of that we're here at Thanksgiving, and so tell me what can I do to bring to you, God, sacrifices of praise. So turn with me in your Bibles to the book of 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter number 2, 1 Peter chapter number 2. I'm going to look at one verse. It's a verse with lots of information. And then we want to build from there. Amen. Peter writes and he says, You also as lively stones. Why are we alive? You know why we're alive? He can refer to us as lively stones. Because we are alive in Christ. We're no longer dead in our trespasses and sin, but we're alive in Christ. Amen. He said, are to build up a spiritual house. Now, he's not talking about an institution uh, where we're building up Miracle Revival Church. And yes, we are to work and labor for Miracle Revival Church. But we aren't building a uh, Miracle Revival Church in general, but we are building the church. So we're lively stones. What, what does it take to build a building? We need stones. Uh, we need a foundation. Uh, we need a framework. We need walls. Uh, we, need, we need those things that, that, that we can build, that building, amen. It is the kingdom of God. It is the church, amen. It is those who are born again, and we are building the family of God. Are you glad for the family of God? Amen. Amen. Me too. I'm thankful for my brothers and sisters in the Lord. The Bible says that we're lively stones. Our responsibility is to build the family of God, the church. And he says, and holy priesthood. Do you know that when you become a believer, that now you became a priest? We have Jesus as our high priest, but he calls us, amen, to, to be a priest as well. A, a holy priesthood, amen, uh, uh, Christ being uh, the great high priest. To offer up spiritual sacrifices. That's what I want to look at tonight. Spiritual sacrifices. Amen. To offer up spiritual sacrifices. The greatest sacrifice, the finished work, is Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. He came to be the sacrifice. He is the Lamb of God. And now He calls us to offer up a sacrifice. Amen. And He goes on down to say that it is to be acceptable to God by Christ Jesus. The only way that we can ever be acceptable by God through Christ Jesus is through faith. Amen. So tonight, we have a work that we are to do, and that is we are to offer up, the Bible says, spiritual sacrifices, which is acceptable by God, amen, uh, uh, by Jesus Christ. It takes faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ to be able to offer up acceptable sacrifices unto God. Let's talk about a few sacrifices. And I don't want to be lengthy tonight, but man, I want to power pack you. I want to instruct you for the next few moments. What are spiritual sacrifices? There's a few, and there's six that I want to look at in general uh, as we look at these spiritual sacrifices that God has called us to offer up. It is Thanksgiving, right? And so we should be coming with Thanksgiving, offering our sacrifices unto God with gratitude and thanksgiving for all that He's done for us. How many of you are thankful for God? Amen. All that God has done for you. So we know that living a life of gratitude is an attitude that we carry with us at all times. But we're thinking about this being thanksgiving. We're thinking about being thankful. And so God has called us to offer up spiritual sacrifices unto Him. Because we have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. We're in lively stones. We're building the, uh, the kingdom of God. We're building the church. We're a holy priesthood. And so we need to bring sacrifices that are acceptable to God by Christ Jesus. So the first sacrifice... Turn with me.
with me to Romans. Romans chapter number 12. And I know this is a familiar chapter, a verse of Scripture. However, I believe that there's some good things that we can learn tonight. Amen. From the Word of God. That is fresh and new. Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren. What's he doing? He's saying, I'm begging of you, brother. By the mercies of God. Amen. All believers have been given the mercy of God. It's not by our merit, but it's by the mercy of God. Paul said, I beg of you by the mercies that you've received of God, that you present your bodies as a living what? Sacrifice. sacrifice. Amen. That's right. That word sacrifice means that that, that, uh, that, that we cannot do this on our own means, but it's by the power of the Holy Ghost through faith, amen, that, that demands us to give ourselves completely to God, that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, amen, the Word of God says that are holy. How can we be holy? You know how we're holy? Through the Holy Ghost. You and I do not have the merit or the ability to be holy on our own. We can't do it. But through the Holy Ghost, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we can uh, present ourselves as a living sacrifice. And he said not only holy, but it is acceptable unto God. Amen. It means that, that, that we are the temple. We're accepted by God, which is our reasonable service. Amen. You look at the cross. Amen, Sister Tina. It's only reasonable that I give my body as a living sacrifice for the judgment because of what He's done on the cross. And He said, And be not conformed, or be not molded to the ways of this world, but be transformed. Amen. Our, our minds are spiritually changed. Our thinking is changed because of the work of the cross, that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now when we look at this, Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren and sister to sister not, he's talking to the whole body of Christ, that you present your bodies. The word that is used here in the Greek is soma. It means our bodies, our whole persons. Amen. He said, I challenge you to give your whole self unto God. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? So we, we look at that, and Brother Eli, uh, some folks think, well, if I pay my penance, I pay my tithe, I, I'll be all right. That's not your whole body. That's, that's not even really anything about your body. Ain't nobody wants your whole body, your, your body, uh, your mind, your soul, everything about you, your soul, uh, your, your whole person. Amen. He wants you to give it to Him every day as a sacrifice to God. I, I, I beseech you, therefore, by the, by the mercy of God, that you present your whole bodies, your bodies, I, but, but, but what the text is saying, your whole bodies unto God. You see, when you get out of bed, you make a choice that I'm going to serve God, and I'm going to do it the right way. Now, when we get up, we can say, I'm going to be a spiritual Christian by the wall, or I'm going to be a carnal Christian. I deal with that every day. What does that mean? If I'm spiritual, Brother Doug, everything about my body, everything about my day and my life, I give to God. But if I'm a carnal Christian, it's about what I can do for me. What, what can I do for my own personal satisfaction? But God has called us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice. God, what can I do as a spiritual person? Today. That means when we get up tomorrow morning, we say, God, God, this is a day that you've given me. But my sacrifice is what can I do to give to you in the spot? What can I do to present myself holy, spotless, acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service? Because what you've done for me on the cross. This is the message that's not always preached. It's not about our gain and what I can achieve. But it's about what this body can do for Christ. I'm talking about sacrifices tonight. Peter said that ye 
offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. What are those sacrifices? First of all, it's that I present my body to God as a sacrifice. The second thing is not only that we offer up our, 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 ourselves, our bodies, as a sacrifice, a spiritual sacrifice to God, but let's look at Ephesians chapter number 2, that we offer up sacrifices of love. Ephesians uh, chapter number 5 and verse number 2, the Word of God says, and walk in love. Let me jump back a verse. He said, be ye therefore followers of, of God as dear children. Children are pretty good followers for the most part, being obedient in, in the instructions. And walk in love. The spirit of our world is love. No, 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 no. It's not a, 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 a love that, that is all carefree. Uh, we're not talking about, you know, all peace and love. We're talking about the sphere of our life is our love for God. And therefore, it radiates in every other way. So we, we sacrifice in giving our love for God. The Bible says, as Christ loved us, our example of love is as Christ loved us. Uh, we're thinking about how Jesus left the glory of heaven and it came to earth to robe himself in flesh, to live as a man, and to die as a man, and still bear the marks of Calvary because he loved us. And that's the same realm in which we live, that we bear the marks of the cross, that we are following God. Amen. And because of the love of God, we love him and we love others. The spirit of the life that we live is driven by our love. The Bible says, and has given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a, 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 as a, for a sweet smelling savor. Amen. Uh, we want to be a sweet smelling savor to God. But when they offered up sacrifices for the day, there was an aroma that rose to God. And in his nostrils, Sister Stacy, he was pleased with the aroma in our life, Brother Justin. There is a sacrifice. We give our bodies, but we also live a sacrifice of love. Amen. Uh, the, the love that we live in, the spirit that we live in, amen. Our first responsibility is to love God. And then we love people as Christ loved people. Do we love people? I'm not talking about tolerating people. I'm talking about loving people. Amen. And I, I think sometimes the world gets it mixed up and they say you're supposed to love people. And we are. Everything about our life should indicate that we love people as God loves people. But real love is true. Well, and don't get it mixed up. We still stand for righteousness. And because we love people, we tell them the truth. But we do it in love. We love. See, we, we don't have to love the actions of people, but we have to love people. And you see, our actions will show them how much God loves them. Amen. I'm talking about sacrifices. And I'm talking about putting ourselves aside and saying, I want to love as Christ loved. I want to sacrifice and be in the sphere of love. And walk in love as Christ has also has loved us and given himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God for sweet smelling sake. I wonder if God could have given the aroma of our life this week of our love for Him and our love for others. It's not easy. That's why it's called sacrifice. So I'm talking about spiritual sacrifices, our bodies as a sacrifice. I'm talking about the spiritual sacrifice of love. The third thing I want to look at this evening is in Philippians chapter number 2, verse number 17. And that is the sacrifice of faith. Verse number 17, Paul is writing to the Philippians church at Philippi. And he says, 
Yes, and if I be offered upon sacrifice and service of your faith, he said, I will give you, I, 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 I give myself for you. I joy and rejoice with you. Know where Paul was writing this epistle or letter to the church of Philippi at? He was writing to them from prison. Now, he wasn't some dirty, rotten scoundrel who deserved to be in prison. But because of his faith and because of his life, he was in prison. He was unjustly put in prison. But as he talked about the spiritual sacrifice of faith, this word faith, uh, which is uh, in, in, in the Greek, it means a conviction, a trust, a belief. Here he was, he was in prison, but he was saying, my sacrifice of being here, I can be here and I can be talking about how I've been unjustly done. I can be talking about how that I've served God and I'm in this position that I don't really want to be in. He said, but I have to have faith. And the sacrifice of my faith is that I believe that my imprisonment is because it is going to help someone else in their relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be looking at the things in your life and you may say, I'm trying to take faith in these. I, you know, I don't see the answer right now, but by faith, I'm believing for things that are not seen right now. But sometimes it's a sacrifice of faith and believing that our faith walk somewhere is helping someone else with their relationship with God. And so here it is, Paul is saying to the church, he said, listen, I'm willing to die if necessary if it will grow your faith faith. Um, what do you, 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 you know in our life? We pray for others that they may grow spiritually. We pray for our loved ones that they may be saved. Uh, but you know sometimes God allows those things that, that are faith builders in our life. Amen. And, and God wants us to grab hold of them as a sacrifice and say listen, I will sacrifice even in my faith if it helps someone else come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as their Savior. What are the things that we go through in our life that really they are challenges of faith? We have them in our life. You know, we don't like them. We don't want them. We would not uh, uh, elect to have them. Uh, but, but God allows them. And so we have to say by faith, God, I've been praying for my family. God, I've been praying for my friends. I've been praying for our community. So if it's this situation that brings me to the precipice of needing to say, I'm grabbing hold by faith, and whatever it takes, I want to see others come to the knowledge of you. I'm talking about spiritual sacrifices. Where we say, God, you're in control of the results. My responsibility is to be faithful. Those are the sacrifices that we live by in our life. God, I'm trusting you because you're in control. Not about spiritual sacrifices. In our body, in our love, but in our faith. And that's what Paul was doing. I don't understand why I'm in the present church. And if it's necessary to that, God. It's all right. But I want my faith in God to be a blessing to you. The fourth thing that I want to look at is in Philippians chapter number four. And there are spiritual sacrifices and gifts. Philippians 4 8, the Word of God says, Found. Uh, 4.18 Paul said, But I have all and abound. And I am full. Having received Ephrodite, the things that, that were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Now, for us to better understand this, I need to jump back. And churches, uh, uh, Paul is writing to, to, to the church of Philippi, but he's saying, Ephrodite came to me, 
And when he came to me, he gave a very large gift to me that was from you. And he said, I want you to know that I accept your gift and that I am full because of the gift that you gave. And I want you to know because of the gift that you gave to me and the work of the ministry, that it was a sweet smelling savor in the nostrils of God. Now, I, 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 I don't know who it may be, but Paul said that he was full or the, the Greek word that he used there is that he was complete. Amen. Uh, Christ told his disciples that whosoever needs a drink, you know, you give them a drink. And if they need something to eat, you give them something to eat. And if they need clothes, you, you give them some clothes. I want you to know that when you give to others, amen, God sees that. Whoever it is, but if you give it in the name of Jesus because you want the kingdom of God to be uh, built, that you want the kingdom of God to be full, I, I need to tell you tonight uh, that it is a sweet smelling saint in the nostrils of God. Some may say, I don't have anything to give. I don't believe that everybody has something to give. And if we will sacrifice and we will give, not because we want a pat on the back or we want a tax deduction, but because we truly love God and we love the people of God and we love the kingdom of God being built, then we learn to sacrifice. That's a spiritual sacrifice to me. God help us that we help others live their life full. I wonder tonight, I want you to think for a second. I wonder if someone's lived their life less than full and we're responsible for that. Because we have and we did not give. Spiritual sacrifices to Amen. Spiritual sacrifices today. Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number 15. Hebrews 13, verse number 15. The Bible says, By Him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. The sacrifice of praise. That word praise here, literally in its original text, it means this, it means speaking well about someone. Everyone likes to be spoken well about, right? And we have that gift to use our tongue to build up or to tear down. Amen. The Bible says that the power of a life is in the tongue. And so uh, we are called to use our tongue as a sacrifice. And that means that we tonight, we speak well about someone. In fact, when we're looking at this and we're talking about a spiritual sacrifice of praise, it means we're talking well about God. And not only we're talking well about God, but we are continually speaking well about God. And that's the spiritual sacrifice that He wants from us. Amen. How is it in our life? Amen. If we are continually giving praise to God. Do you know some Christians are really good about being a grumbler? Some Christians know how to grumble really, really good. In fact, it's a shame. Amen. But God's not called us to be grumblers. But God has called us to be worshipers. And so the spiritual sacrifice that He wants is that we praise His name. The Bible says that His mercies are new every day. We have something new every day to praise Him for. And so God has called us to offer spiritual sacrifices and God's worship to continually speak well about Him. The last sacrifice that I want to share tonight, spiritual sacrifice, we've talked about the sacrifice of our bodies. We've talked about the sacrifice of the love, living in the sphere of love as God has loved us. We've talked about sacrifices of faith, even when we see, even when we don't understand, 
but by faith we believe that the kingdom of God is being built and others will be saved by what we're going through. We've talked about the spiritual sacrifices of gifts. Paul said that Aphrodite brought him a gift from the church of Philippi that made him be full. We have the ability of filling other people's lives by the sacrifices of our life. We've talked about the sacrifices of praise by continually praising and worshiping, speaking well about someone, particularly God. But the sacrifices of work. In Hebrews chapter number 13, in verse number 16, the Word of God says, but to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Amen. It means that we should not exhaust. What is good? Amen. It means good deeds. Amen. It means that, that not only like good deeds, but we are in a partnership. Amen. Good deeds that we're in a partnership with. Amen. And that means that we are doing good deeds for one another, the people of God. You know that when we come to church and we shake hands and when we hug necks and when we encourage by the word, by testimony, that we are fulfilling the good deeds that God has called us to do and there are sacrifices as we serve one another. It's good deeds and a partnership together. Sometimes it's a sacrifice. Amen. Sometimes we have to lay aside things, but we need to show the love of God to one another. Sometimes it's by giving of ourselves and what God has blessed us with, we give to one another. Those are spiritual sacrifices as we are lively stones, as Peter said, building up the kingdom of God. I'm talking about spiritual sacrifices tonight. I'm sure these are not all the sacrifices that God has taught us to, but I believe there's six that we can really work hard on that God has called us to sacrifice. I know that we live in a world, I know that we live in a world it is about being self-absorbed, Brother Eli. It's about what I can gain and what I can get and how I can build my kingdom and how great of a kingdom that I can have for myself in this lifetime. And I believe that we do need to take care of ourselves. We we need to rest. And there are times where we need to make sure that that that, that we are taken care of because the best us that's taken care of takes care of other people's better. But if you're living your whole life taking care of you. You've never learned sacrifice. I've never learned sacrifice. But I need to tell you, the Word of God has called us to spiritual sacrifices. So tonight, the challenge is this. The challenge is this. Would you sacrifice your body? Say, God, here I am. I give you all of me. Nothing with help, but all of me. And then would you commit that as you're giving God your all? I'm saying this in my closing moments. Would you say, but God, I'm going to live in the spirit of love. As you love me, I want to love you. And as you love others, I want to love others. It's a sacrifice. There's no, there's no uh, contingencies upon loving them. There's some pretty unlovable people in the world, isn't there? I mean, there's some grumblers, and there's some unthankful people, and there's some folks that uh, they make it hard to love sometimes. God hasn't asked you to fix them. God has asked you to love them. Leave the fiction of him. And then he calls us to this position where by faith, even when we don't understand, we're going to trust God. And we're going to believe that whatever God's up to and working in, by faith, he's working in the lives of us. 
Listen, there are lots of people out there that have needs. May my eyes be open to their needs. May your eyes be open to their needs. Let no one in the kingdom of God live life short because we did not fill them up with what we have. God help us. And then we live our life in such a way that our sacrifices are continual to God.